Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. Hope everyone's doing well. Now, in this episode, in the next episode, I'm going to be installing the uh, settee behind me here on the port side of the boat inside the cabin. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be getting it at least installed and screwed down to the sole. And then in the next episode, I'll be uh, fabricating the seat panels and getting it somewhat tabbed into the hull. But uh, there'll be more on that part of it in the next episode. So, um, hope you enjoy the episode. There was a settee here originally, and I still have it, and I'm going to reinstall it. I'm going to modify it just slightly. So, I was able to kind of peel this stuff off. It's just a one, one layer of uh, woven roving, like they used everywhere for tabbing. And um, I managed to peel this off with a screwdriver and a metal putty type knife, and um, it just peeled off. It wasn't easy, but it wasn't difficult either. So I got all this off yesterday, and uh, now today I, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just grinding along it to just to clean it up a little bit more because there's some residual stuff on there, and I'm just using my bower here with my sanding disc on it. I have a larger disc too, but this one seems to be working fine, so I'm gonna stick with it. All right, so before I get started, I'm just gonna take you around and see what I'm kind of up against. <laughs> So that's my little storage room behind here. Got all kinds of boat stuff back here, stacked up. But in that pile right there, you can probably not even recognize it, is the settee. <laughs> so that's my challenge to get that out of there today so I can bring it over to the boat. So hopefully next time you see it, it'll be at the boat and it won't be broke. <laughs> so I'm going to get started on that. Okay, well, as I said, next time you'd see this, it'd be at the boat. And um, it was quite a quite a thing to get this out of there. It's all actually kind of taken apart, even though it looks like it's together. So I'll just um, <laughs> explain what's going on here. Um, that's where it kind of sits, I think. Um, but there's some issues, and um, I'll go over them quick. First thing, this piece here... Um, actually goes down on the bottom. It goes right up against the back of the back of these pieces runs along the floor uh, sole down here and um, That's where it's Kind of screwed down to the floor in these areas and it's screwed to the, um, the Little tracks for the drawers on the back side of them uh, I'm not gonna put that in there that that was put in I believe because they built this thing in the shop and that was holding everything together And it was a way for them to attach it. So I don't think I need that piece um, I'll get this other piece out of the way here, too. This is a piece of trim It's kind of come goes up here once you put the plywood in And it has a little bit of an edge on it. So it keeps the cushion from like falling out So I'll reuse that. It's a nice piece of mahogany uh, there's one of the drawers installed in there. and um, But all this other framework, look, the plywood is attached. You can see there's a screw right here. So all the plywood pieces are attached. Um, these pieces, if I touch that, that's probably fall out. It's just sitting there. It's supposed to be screwed in here and then a couple places back there to that cross piece. Um, the only one that's actually kind of screwed in is this one is actually screwed into the cross piece. The cross piece, there's this support piece back here. It's just it's supposed to be screwed into the plywood, but it's not. It's just pinned in with a ring shank nail. Factory did that probably before they put the screws in just to get it lined up or something. So that's what's holding that in right now. So it's all kind of just hanging there at the moment. I guess it all starts with this door. Um, the wall on this side of the door is not pinned down to the floor. I can move it. I can move it this way in and out, or side to side. Um, but it is kind of, it's not really pinned to the top either too bad, too much, especially in the back. I'm not sure if it's nail, if it's uh, the decking is screwed to it in the top. I don't think it is. But you can see on the top here, there's a gap right there. And um, I think that gap is causing some issues with the fitment of the door. Um, probably was like that from the factory, but I don't know. It's like the gap on this side of the door is much larger 
and down at the bottom. I think at the bottom it's pretty good, and I can actually close that up if I kick that wall, you know, to the left here. So I think the first thing I want to do to get this door fitting better is to um, close up this gap here between this wall and this wall here. But to do that, I'm going to have to cut this piece of trim on an angle here and cut it all the way through so that I can push it because I think that's what's holding it from going more to the left. So that's one of the things I'm going to do. Once I get that tight up there, um, then I can check the gap over here. Then the only thing I can do with the gap is just make it even all the way down. There's a lot of wasted space here, <laughs> if you look at it. Um, you get these wide pieces and the drawer just comes to the bottom of them. And um, this all just originally had one piece of plywood on it. Just one big piece. And what I'm going to do is just put a piece of plywood from that board over to the hull and permanently fasten it to this board here and it'll be tabbed in the hull. So that'll give the strength at the hull area there. And then this whole area here will probably be um, a couple boards, a couple pieces of plywood, some cleats and stuff. So I could just remove the cushion and then lift off the plywood and there'll be all of like little lockers for tools or extra lines or anything else in here. Um, stuff I don't get at all the time, but I could fit all my t a lot of tools and stuff in there. It's pretty deep. So I think that's what I'm going to actually do for this. All right, well, what I'm going to be working on today is trying to get this door fitting a little better. This is kind of where it was when I bought the boat, but there was a little piece of trim on there to cover that. But I think this has to come over and that should be touching. I'm going to take the door off. I mean, at least this joint, I don't know if that's glued or not. I'm probably going to take this piece of blocking out right here too, because this is going to have to come over. This way, you can see there's a gap right there. It's the same gap. So, that's what we're going to try to close up. All right, well, I decided not to film that. <laughs> and I'm glad I did, because it was hot in here, and I was getting frustrated because I couldn't figure it out. But I moved it over. Um, you can see the gap on the top of the door there is not too bad. It's actually touching right at the top here now. It's a little open there, but that might be okay. And I started off by just cutting this part, cutting around, and then going on this side and doing the same thing. I cut it through here. And this piece of wood was actually further away. It was gapped. And it came all the way up to here somewhere. It came all the way up to about here. So this is, but it was my problem right there, that screw. Screwed from the other side, I couldn't get at it. Trim's already in. So I took my oscillating saw and cut through this and then just chiseled all this area out. And then that exposed, which I kind of thought there was a couple screws right here. Um, I had to release those. I thought I had to release this one here too, but I didn't really have to. But those two right there are actually screwed into the end of one of these boards, probably this one. Ah, it could be that one. I don't know, it was screwed into these. So now you can see there's a gap up here that was all tight before, so that's how far it moved. So I might have to move it a little bit more, but I'm gonna try putting the door back in. It's just kind of wedged in there now. I'm gonna try putting the door back in and see how the gap is. All right, guys, well, I'm running out of daylight, and uh, but I did finish. Um, there's the gap. On this side, um, there's a little, I cut a little bit more than I wanted to and at the top here, this whole chunk kind of broke out when I was cutting up at this angle. So I was a little bit bummed, but I might squeeze it together a little bit more, it'll probably be like that when it's done. It's just kind of sitting there now. Uh, but here's the um, gap on this side and my little gauge here. And uh, here we go. It's in there good. Now the gap's pretty good all the way down, actually. It gets a little tighter at the bottom. I'm probably going to have to um, kick the bottom out a little bit. It opens and closes. Like, oh, really good. Doesn't hit. And, uh, yeah, it's really nice. So, here we go. We got the gap going. Didn't screw up the top gap too much. And um, 
I think the bottom gap is probably better, more even as well. Um, that was a little off too. So I kind of fixed that too. So, all in all, I'd say this was a success. I like it. Really good. That was, that was a huge gap and a huge issue to try to deal with. Alright guys, well a quick update on the head wall door kind of fix here. Um, and last night I came over, I didn't have too long, just a few hours. So I um, epoxied this together. And I used Thixo Flex with a wood color. They call it a wood color, it's just brown coloring. So it hides it a little bit. But there was quite a bit of gap there. I still gotta sand it, but it'll hopefully hide it better than you know, if I used just a filler and it was white or something. So anyways, this is what we got. This is what we're gonna have. And uh, here's the inside. It's a tighter gap on the inside. It's nice and tight up there. So that's all epoxy together. That corner's pretty good. Still gotta put these screws in here or some screws. I gotta get a couple longer screws uh, because I'll show you on this side. The, uh, I guess just have a wedge in there. I was holding it in place, but there's a gap here that I have to fill with some wood and then probably redrill and um, screw those together. That'll hold all this together here on this corner a little bit better. But that's it. The door gap, as I've shown before, is good now. Up the top, everything closes good. So now I'll get back on to the, putting the settee in or fitting it in. So today I'm going to just probably pull this out and finish grinding where I'm going to do the tabbing. I'm actually going to do the tabbing on this one, but I'll remove it someday in the future when I do the black water tank. But for now, I'm just going to put it in and just um, screw these in like just with that one. I probably won't even use that screw. I'll just lay it in there. I just want to get this in and then someday I'll modify it um, in place. Probably cut it out from here to back in here somewhere. But then I could put the drawer in until I do the black water tank. Who knows? That could be years from now. I have no idea. But I can, at least I can use the boat and have a drawer there and then modify it later. See here, and I actually found all the screws that hold this thing together. <laughs> so that was good. So I'm going to, I've got it all screwed together now. So it's all one unit and um, it's easy to move in and out and mess around with. But what I did was uh, from the factory, this face of this was actually sticking out here, probably more even with the frame here. It stuck out pretty good. And I really didn't like it. I had to put like a 90 degree kind of a piece of trim on that corner. And when I fit the cushion, I had plenty of room behind it up against the hull. So I'm actually just gonna push it all in that way so it sits more like that. I think it just looks better. And um, <laughs> that's how I want it. So uh, it gives me about an inch more of space, floor space, which doesn't sound like much, but in a tight area, it's quite a bit. And uh, it it looks, it fits really good that way. So I like it. But what I'm gonna do today, you can see I sand it all down in here up against this uh, wall, the head wall, and down below. And um, you can see how the factory did tab it all the way down. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna continue the tabbing all the way down to the bottom. That'll hold a wall in, in the back there. It's kind of flopping around at the moment. And then there's going to be a, a rectangular piece of mahogany, like cleat down along here. Um, there was one from the factory and then the wall screwed in from the other side into it. So I'm going to probably cut that and make that a new one. The old one was all rotted. So I'll make a new one so I can secure the whole bottom of that wall down.
All right, so there we have it. Put another coat of epoxy on everything. And uh, it's still wet, I just did it. But that's the cleat end on this side. So pretty happy with that, came out good. It's a nice quick job. Uh, I'll show you the other side. The other side I had to fill the bottom of the wall with epoxy because it was quite a gap, especially in the back here. But I'm gonna be, um, probably, I'm gonna be, I know I'm gonna be fiberglassing this wall at least halfway up. It was laminate on this area up to like right where that striping is. It was all white laminate, countertop laminate. So I peeled it off, but I think I'm going to fiberglass it and paint it white. Um, just to protect it is the bath, is the head, and there's a shower in here. It's not a wet head, but it's kind of like a wet head. Just because it's so small. I'm going to grind off all this. I flipped up. I'm going to grind off all this fiberglass and stuff here. And get this prepared to fit in there. All right, guys. Well, the sete is finally in its position where it's going to go when I install it. Um, took a little work to get it where I had it, um, and it's not exactly where the factory had it, but it's where I think it should have been installed, in my opinion. Here's the corner where it meets up with the head wall, and uh, you can see it's kind of flush. It actually, it's actually back a little bit, but that's actually good because of the radius on that corner of the wall uh, won't be in into that so that looks actually better um this is the area here i'm gonna have to put a piece of trim here just because the plywood's kind of crappy and there's these screw holes there's another one up in here you can't see behind this piece of trim as an example i've got all the tabbing off the plywood so that's all ready to be re-tabbed back in it's good it's a tighter fit than what they had over here's a good example of where the factory holes aren't where i want them there's no framing in here so that would just be into plywood. Um, where I really want to have it is over here. I know there's a piece right here. You can see where I screwed in the plywood. So I'll probably put a screw right in here somewhere. So I'm going to have to find, I could probably put another one in. You can see there's, these are two pieces. So the framing kind of goes this way. So I could probably put one in here too. So that's the kind of stuff I have to figure out. You see my piece of temporary plywood here that's going to come out when I put the black water tank in just screwed down and this is the piece of framing that's going to be coming out someday because uh, it interferes with it and the black the hatch has to go all the way over to the end there so this whole piece here from here to at least right in this area has to be where that notch is has to be removed and someday and, um, but I still want all this tabbed in back here just for the support for this, you know, for the plywood on top. Um, got to add a cleat along the wall here on both sides too. That's, that's gone. I took that out. Got to put a new one in there. Okay, so it's update time. I actually finished everything I need to finish to get this thing in. It doesn't look any different than this morning, except it's actually solidly in. Cut this and fit this a little better, so I've got that fitting nicer. Just had to sand a little bit up in this corner here. And um, I put a cleat back here, a couple screws there, and then it's actually screwed into the plywood here. So that's keeping that solid there. And that's it for now. The only thing else I did, I'll come around this way so you can see. Um, well, there's nothing supporting this bottom piece. I put these, I'm gonna put these cleats in here. I just put little screws in um, because they, uh, well, these ones go into some wood here, but the other bays, they don't. Um, so I just put some real small screws, and it's just going to hold it while the epoxy dries. But I'm going to epoxy those in once I shut down this camera. And then pull this whole thing out of here. You can see, uh, here's the other ones. There's another one in that bay, and then there's one, one in that one. And that's uh, you know, up against this because this is a little flimsy. So when I install this, I'll just epoxy behind there and then clamp this on. And uh, it'll just be epoxy to this. I don't want to drill any screw holes in here. Just trying to avoid that. And it'll kind of locate it when I actually install it. I can just slide it up against those and that'll be it.
Okay, so I've been working about an hour on this thing, sanding it. And um, the toughest part was this face frame because I had to sand off all the old varnish. And I wanted to be really careful, just used 150. And it was kind of gumming up at first, but uh, I just kept changing my paper and eventually I got it to this stage, which is good enough to um, not have to go too much more crazy with it. Maybe do 220 before I put the varnish on, but uh, I didn't want to dig into the thin layer of veneer that's on this plywood. And uh, I'll show you that in a minute, but we'll go around the back side. And um, I also sanded all these pieces with like 80 grit, just real quick, just to get all the rough roughness off of them. Um, plywood pieces, I'm probably gonna do some epoxy on them because uh, down on the bottom, it's not on that side, I'll show on this side. Uh, no, that one's not bad. Oh, this one here, yeah, there's some, there was some delamination on this, the outer layer of plywood and um, so I just want to protect all that with um, some epoxy on the edges and things uh, just so it doesn't happen again so I'm going to be working on that tonight just fixing all these little spots of minor damage to the plywood there's nothing major nothing's like rotting away but on the front piece back here this is kind of chunked up over here and it's kind of very brittle and I don't want to mess with it. These pieces are peeling away. I want to epoxy all this. And um, so it'll be a little more stable. And um, I guess up on here, this is kind of pulling away here. I want to get some epoxy in there and just clamp it together to stabilize that corner. And then the, the real biggest issue is probably on this side. I was having trouble sanding over here because of all this chunkiness here and chipped out area. Um, so I'm going to epoxy all this and then resand. This is all going to be covered with a strip of trim, so it's not too important, but I just don't want it peeling away and then peeling way back into this area. So I'm just trying to be careful with it. Because down here was where there was a spot of white something. I don't know what it was, mold or something probably. And I sanded it, but I caught this piece right here and it pulled off a chunk that big. So I saved the piece. I'm going to epoxy it back in and epoxy all this edge here tonight, and epoxy this little piece down, um, and then I'll re-sand it. I had, to, I had to put this little piece back in. I think I showed that piece that had broken out when I was sanding it. And so what I did was I just took this packing tape, cut off a few strips, and um, taped them together so there's no, there was no sticky side in the end. You know, it's the sticky against the sticky, I guess I would say. And I clamped it. I used the use 610 here as well. And um, put it on with 610. And then here's the, the little pieces that just um, kept the clamps from sticking. I just put two of them so there's no sticky because it's it's back to back. Um, and then uh, just peel these off here. And... Um, uh, you probably can't even, I'm going to have to sand this out. Oops, sorry, I left the camera off here. Uh, yeah, you probably can't even, there's, see the line there, just barely. But um, that's the repair. I put that piece back in. So I'll sand this all off here. And um, All right, well, I'm going to give it a little update. I actually forgot to do this over the weekend. But I did get this corner of the wall fixed here. All epoxy together. This is all super solid now. Um, I actually had to push this part of it that way to get in behind because this is kind of like an L-shaped piece behind here and I had to get the epoxy all the way in and around on the other side of this piece. But anyways, it worked and it's all nice and solid. So that's awesome. You get that done. I've got these cleats in here. These are epoxied in for the settee. I had to put some where I had to flatten this out. I had to put a few coats of epoxy on here. I'll probably just give that a quick sand, but I don't really have to. I just wanted something on there because it was bare plywood. So all the three cleats are in. And so this area is basically ready. I gotta, I'm just going to sand where I marked off. You can see where the marks were. The um, settee sits on here. So I'll probably just give these a sanding with some 80 grit. Well, all right, guys. Uh, I think it's time for an update. I think last time I filmed, I was uh, repairing this bottom corner here. 
doing some stuff in the uh, my shop. So I guess I'll show you this bottom corner. All right, put that little piece back on down here um, and sanded it out. You can notice it a little, but it, it looks pretty good. I did two coats of epoxy on all of this plywood here and uh, the runner pieces for the drawers. I still got to sand the top part of these. I didn't put any up here because uh, the drawers are going to slide on that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but anyways, I got them coated. And the reason why I coated everything was just because I was noticing some delamination at the bottom of some of the plywood, even though the plywood isn't in bad shape. It's in great shape, but it's some of the bottom corners have a little delamination, so they got some, picked up some moisture. And mostly on the outer, the outer layer, which is a thinner layer. So I pot double epoxy coated both sides of it, on all of them. I only really was going to do just down at the bottom, but I figured I might as well do the whole thing. I'm doing it anyways. So I did that. And I also added um, a cleat in this corner vertically. I'll clamp the corner to that because there's nothing really to attach it to. It wasn't. And uh, I don't really feel like drilling holes in this, so I'm just going to rely on the epoxy to hold that in. And then on this side, did the same thing at the vertical. That's actually the, about half of the original piece that was there. I just cut it. All right, so I've got everything pre-wetted that needs to be pre-wetted with uh, epoxy, unthickened epoxy. I've applied all the 610 in all the areas that it needs it. So here we go. Here goes nothing. Alright guys, well it is the next day. Everything's dried. This is just how I left it yesterday when I left. And uh, pretty happy with it. Well that's going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed that and you um, check out uh, part two of putting in this uh, port sauté. So until then, have a good one and we'll see you really soon right here on Renovation Sportfish.